Good evening and welcome to the service tonight. I invite you to stand with us as we sing page 271, Sunlight. I wandered in the shades of night till Jesus came to me And with the sunlight of his love bid all my darkness flee Shining in my soul, amen. That's some wonderful sunlight. Thank you for being here tonight, all you that are here in person, as well as those joined by the way of medium. And uh, I want to share with you a few prayer requests tonight, and let's let's pray together for these things and uh, share with you some things. And I believe that uh, we bring them for, before the Lord. And ask God to intervene and work in those things as well. Uh, let me let me ask you if you would to continue to. Uh, well, let me respond to this one. Uh, Cynthia's brother uh, Galen Collins, his surgery was on this past Monday. I got received a text from her on Monday evening, and she said, "Thank everybody for praying." And uh, if we would continue to pray for him, but the surgery went well, everything went okay. And so if you would, would you please, uh, would you please uh, pray, uh, continue to pray for him as well. And then let me ask you if you would please to continue to pray for Thomas and Brenda Bailey. Remember Thomas, they're, going to, they're trying to find a place to place him uh, he's not able to stand on his own and do those things. So uh, you pray for Miss Brenda. Uh, you know this is a very stressful time for her. And, uh, and pray for uh, her as well. Uh, Doris Flanagan, that's Larry Sigmund's uh, sister, continue to pray for her. And then I shared this with you on Sunday, Dennis Smith Sr. And uh, continue to pray for him. And, of course, he's been having to... Uh, take Daniel for treatment, so continue to pray uh, for uh, him as well. Also, I want to ask you to continue to pray for Brother JT and be mindful of, of them and, uh, and everything. Continue to pray for him. Uh, also, I want to, Miss um, Doris, she was trying to get in touch with Sandra, and she called my cell phone and uh, was wanting a beauty hair job. And I said, I can do that, Miss Doris, amen. And uh, I said, you didn't know I did hair, did you? I used to cut the boys' hair all the time and everything and still can't uh, And uh, if I had to. But, uh, I, you know, I was teasing her a little bit. And uh, I asked her, I said, how's Martin? She said, we didn't get much rest last night. If you would really pray for Martin. He is not doing well, and uh, I'm going to try to get by there and see them. And, uh, and so if you would pray for them, uh, and, and much prayer for Martin, and pray for Doris as well, uh, like Brenda. 
she's got a load on her. And uh, so, and of course, Mamie and all the others as well. Uh, just, re just remember Martin and Doris, if you would please, and be mindful of them. Continue to pray for Louis Eanes, and that's Otis's uh, brother. Is COVID in the hospital? If you'd pray much for, or for, or for, uh, for him, and then continue to remember in prayer Faye Hedrick, and Cynthia Delancey. And, of course, all those in Jean Pittman, remember her, and Frankie Wright, and those, if you would, please. I want to give you some added prayer requests tonight. Uh, let me add this as well. Pray for, and I'm going to see her tomorrow, um, and uh, Miss uh, Geraldine Burton, uh, Lisa, went to visit, and she shared this with me yesterday when she found out. Uh, contacted me. She is going to be moving back to Utah, and Miss Geraldine is not doing well. And uh, I, I emailed back and forth with her. It's hard for her to hear on the phone, and uh, and everything. And and she's got some different views as well on issues. And uh, but uh, if you would pray for her, and she's moving back there to live. And she certainly loves New Heights, and she loves her church family here. And uh, uh, so they'll be going back there and uh, with her daughter. And, uh, and I'll let you know more about that on Sunday as well. I appreciate Lisa contacted me yesterday. She asked her, said, have you let Pastor know this? And she said, no. And she kind of keeps it to herself. But if you would pray much for her and uh and her need physical her physical needs right now i'd greatly appreciate that then brother roger praise the lord that he's doing better and we give god the glory for that but we have some prayer requests from from him uh if you would pray for uh violet pretty and um de uh, dementia and of course dehydration and this is roger and lisa's aunt and if you would pray for uh, them and their family as well. And then Ken Brown, and uh, pray for him. He has COVID. And then Chloe Christensen, she's 16-year-old. She started treatment today for thyroid cancer and there in Texas. And so if you will remember them as well. Is there any other prayer requests that we need to make mention of tonight? Brother R.B.? Yes, Ronnie Hunt, our Ronald Huntley family. Continue to pray uh, for that family and the passing of, of uh, Brother Arby's brother and pray for his wife. And uh, not only was he your brother, but a brother-in-law. And uh, so pray for, pray for them. Uh, are there any others tonight? I, did somebody say something to me about something I didn't remember? Brother Roger. Okay, Richard Gates passed away over in Wentworth, and Brother Roger went to school with their uh, with uh, uh, his children. So if you'd pray for them, the funeral will be tomorrow. Uh, if you'd make note of that and remember that family, and continue to pray for Sherry Grogan's uh, cousins and family there. All right, any other thing that I need to make mention of? I believe I've covered uh, quite a few things tonight. And, uh, and, and I know I mentioned different ones. So if, if you would be much in prayer for those. And then if you would please just note this. Uh, on the special prayer list, uh, on the element of special prayer, uh, we have, uh, I want you to do this. Just, I know I don't mention a special prayer list that often. Pray for the church, the whole of the church, everyone connected with the church. And then pray for Pastor Lawson and family. If you'd pray for me, and then, of course, pray for Beacon, Brother Kyle, and all them in our nation. And remember Asa and Caleb and your prayer and our law enforcement, law enforcement uh, and uh, here in Rockingham County. And... Uh, our highway patrol and our EMTs, and be mindful to pray for them. And uh, I, I, I hear sirens of EMT going up down the road all the time. And I pray not only for them as they try to minister in their capacity and service, 
uh, but also I know someone is needing prayer as well as they face something in life. And then our law enforcement, I know they're on their way to take care of things in our world today. Uh, boy, we need to pray for our law enforcement. There's been several that have lost their life in the line of duty. And just, uh, it's atrocious that people would target and try to uh, to take their lives. But let's pray for their safety uh, as they serve our communities and our our state, and then those officers across the cities and states of the United States, let's pray for them and be mindful of them. All right, is that everything tonight? We'll go ahead and go to the Lord in prayer. Also, let's pray for the service tonight and ask God to bless and God to move and God to work, and that's what we want. We want, boy, I'll tell you what, I I have gone back. I have in, I, <laughs> I, I've gone back and looked at YouTube on Sunday, <coughs> excuse me, and uh, I've gone back and, and, and just listen, and, and my heart stirred. Boy, I tell you, what a blessing, what a blessing. So let's pray tonight and ask God to work in our hearts uh, tonight in the service and for God to bless our songs as we lift our voice to him, our special music as, as he's recognized and, and, and we're pointed to Christ again. And may the word of God challenge our hearts as well. Let's pray. <clears throat> Father, tonight, we thank you for your goodness and your grace. We thank you for your love and kindness to us. God, you are a great God. We, we thank you for who you are and all that you do. God, we, we come on behalf of so many needs tonight. I know our church family has been praying and I know that we have uh, been conscious of, uh, of all these needs and we have been bringing them before the throne of the Lord and asking God that you work in your will and your power in every situation. And Lord, tonight we come uh, once again bearing them as a church family here. Even as we sit here in the auditorium and some, by the way, of media as they listen. And Father, I pray that they are praying with us at this present time about all these needs. God, there's so many that need a touch from you. There's so many that need your strength and your help. And God, will you minister to every heart and to every need. Lord, we come tonight in the house of God. We come seeking you, God. We need you, Lord. And will you minister to our hearts through the songs that's been sung? I think about the opening song tonight, Sunlight. I'm thankful for the sunlight of his love and his goodness and his grace. As we go through the remainder, may we once again be reminded over and over of who you are. And then tonight, speak to our hearts through the word of God. Help us work in our hearts and our lives we ask these things in your precious and holy name. Amen and amen. Let me say this. I, I knew it was something I was forgetting. If you'd pray for Br Brother Brandon and Ashley Shamali, and Brother Brandon, as you know, works in the correction system, and uh, they're back some, not all the way to square one up there. And uh, I contacted him, letting him know Liam's birthday was on Sunday and wishing him a happy birthday. And he uh, texted back, said, really pray for them, uh, that they, had, uh, they were having a difficult time at work and they're trying to just maintain. So you continue to pray for them. Don't forget this Sunday, 1030, we'll be going service times 1030 until March the 13th. And then don't forget the uh, Valentine's uh, uh, Fellowship after the evening service. Bring desserts, finger foods. We'll enjoy that time together uh, on, on February the 13th. I believe that covers everything. But let me say this. We ask you to pray for uh, Grace in taking tests. Well, she has got an achievement under her belt. She made through, passed one of her written elements of that and got some more to do. So you continue to... Uh, to pray for her and uh, and pray for Isaac too. He's in medical field and studying and going through getting all that, and so you pray much for him. All right, I think that covers everything I wanted to say tonight. 
And uh, let's get all that out of the way. We can sing and praise the Lord and rejoice in the goodness of the Lord. Amen. Brother Mike. All right, tonight, once again, would you be kind enough to stand? Pay 329, Standing on the Promises. Standing on the promises of Christ my King, through eternal ages let His praises ring. Glory in the highest I will shout and sing. Standing on the promises of God, as we do remain standing to receive the Lord's tithes and offerings tonight, uh, let's bow our heads in prayer. Our Heavenly Father tonight, Lord, is such a blessing to know that we can call upon the name of the Lord. And Father, you hear us, and I pray, dear God, tonight that you would bless this offering, Lord. I pray that you would use it. Lord, for the furtherance of the gospel. And I pray, dear Lord, especially for folks who have special needs, that you surely meet their needs according to your will. Lord, you've been so good. And Lord, we trust you to take care of everything, Lord, according to your will. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>
Thank you. If you take your Bible tonight and go to Psalm 91 just for a little bit, we're going to abbreviate things a little bit later and just a little bit, Hannah, we will, I'll, uh, we'll close out here and I'll have you uh, go ahead and sign off and everything early tonight and, uh, and everything. Uh, Psalm 91, he said, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress and my God. In Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the norselum pestilence. He shall cover thee with His feathers and under His wings shall thou trust his truth shall be thy shield and thy buckler. Uh, normally, we are. Well, I was going to pick up tonight in the book of Mark and uh, pick back up in chapter 3, <clears throat> but we'll postpone that. I just want to challenge your heart right now from this element, uh, you know, the element of truth, of dwelling in the, in the goodness of God. Verse number 2 as he said, I will say of the Lord. Think about the privilege that we have as individuals to say that we, uh, of the Lord, some things. We can truly say that he is our refuge in the time of difficulty, in the time of despair, in the time of trouble. I'm thankful that we have a refuge as a people of God that we can reach a place that we can retreat to. And the safety found in the Lord. I think about in the book of Matthew in chapter number 11. When we're reminded of this. Casting all your cares on him. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> That's First Peter. Amen. And uh, First Peter 5, 7. Casting all your cares upon him for he careth for you. But the book of Matthew reminds us. And what a, he said this. That we are to lay our cares upon him and rest in him. He said, listen, and find rest for your soul. Uh, it seems like in the last two years, uh, we really, our country, our nation, uh, us as a whole, as a church, we have uh, faced so many things together. And truly, I'm thankful for the very thought that he's our refuge, but we have a place that we can go that we can find the solitude and the help that we need. We can find the comfort, the comfort and the help and the rest. That word rest carries with it the idea of peace. David the psalmist goes as far as to say this. He says, let me say this. I'm thankful for the peace. What is he saying? I, just like Matthew reminds us that we can find rest in the Lord and the goodness of God as we, ha we have the privilege to rest our cares in him. What is he saying? We can find the peace of God. Now the peace of God is something uh, that as I ponder that, that thought, I've been pondering it. Uh, some this week on the very element of the peace of God. The peace of God. The peace that passeth all understanding. When we face things, how, how is it that we as believers and children of God can have such peace? How can we have such peace about uh, the future, uh, listen, and, and the present day that we live in? How can we have such peace? It's because of who we know. The psalmist said, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord, I can say it of him, he is, he is my refuge and my fortress. He's the place that I can find solitude, but the fortress, it's the place that I find his protection, protection. I'm thankful of that. Now, that word uh, fortress, I think about the element of it as it, we see in the scriptures, he said, my fortress. I, I think back and I think of it this way. I remember my dad. There was a time when I was not as big as I am now. <laughs> I'm about the same size as I was when I was 14 and 15. Well, I was a lo little bit, well, I was bigger 15 than I am now. Same height and things. But there was a time that I was a young, young boy, 
And, uh, and, and I remember my dad. On the farm, there were in different, different places. This happened several different times. And as a child, we, we tend to look after our children. We, want, we don't want any harm to come to them. We want to protect them. We want their safety. And something would happen. And you know what my dad would do? I've had him. <laughs> I was real young when this happened. He grabbed me and swung me out of the way. He engulfed me with his arms and he protected me. He, or if he could not get me out of the way, he would take and shield me by wrapping his arms around me and protecting me, and he would take the brunt of the blow. <laughs> David said, not only is he my refuge for I can find a help, a very present help in the time of need and the trouble and despair, but he's my fortress, he's my protector. He's the one that takes the brunt. I, can, I know that no harm will come to me because of who he is. What a thought. He said, he is my, uh, he is my refuge and my strength and my God. And I love the statement that he says here at the end of verse number two, in him will I trust. Who else do we have to depend upon? I think about my life verses in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 when he said, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding. Trust in the Lord. That is something I'm glad that I can say, that I trust in the Lord. Those verses have been a blessing to me because I know who I'm relying on. He said, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. He's saying the innermost being... God talks about the heart. He speaks of the heart, the change of the heart. The seat of, of our being is the heart. Everything is, is, is functioning. It was represented, represent, represents the element of our heart. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Uh, he's saying the innermost parts of you, the most sacred place about a human is their heart. And we sang that song, Near to the Heart of God. <laughs> That's a wonderful place to be. But think about this as well. Think about the element of where we are. He said, he said we want to be near the heart of God. But listen, let's take him near our heart. Trust the Lord with all thine heart. You know, I trust him. I trust him with my life, Amen. with my eternity. I trust him in my faith, in my belief. I trust him uh, for the promises he's made of heaven. And I, I trust him in every element of these things. Trusting God. Notice the element, he said this in, and, um, in verse number four. He shall cover thee. Notice he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noise of the pestilence. Verse number three. Know this, that God, what he's trying to say to us is God is working on our behalf. And then notice verse number four. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. You're under the watch care. You know, I, I was reared on a farm like many of you around where uh, years ago you, might have, you may have bought a few eggs at the store for those that live around town or what. But on the farm, we had those Rhode Island Reds. Man, I don't know. I, uh, we've gotten down to just 10 or 15. And Daddy said, we need to buy and re We need to, uh, you know, he said, I've got to set me three or four hens. And uh, sometimes I remember they'd hatch uh, sometimes as high as 10 hens. And we'd have a bunch and and I was excited when they'd start hatching out and start growing because I knew uh, I was going to get one of them birds in the pan. Hey, man, I was going to get some fried chicken because they'd say the old ones we got to get rid of, you know. He go on. But we had, we had plenty of eggs, you know, on the farm. And uh, the element, you know, of watching, I have watched, like yourself, on the farm and uh, just watched them little chickens and and uh, now, my dad despised the hawk, so did my mother, 
don't mess with the chickens. We come home, from, Sherry was sick one, uh, one uh, Sunday, and my younger sister, and mama had to keep her. She kept her at the house, and we come home, and mama had a big old bruise. Her arm was black right here on her right upper arm there. And daddy said, Dolly, what in the world did you do to your arm? She said, well, this morning while y'all was going to church, a hawk come in trying to get the chickens. And she said, I got the shotgun. Ooh. I've seen Mama shoot at a fox when I was about six or seven years old. He dropped the chicken. I, we thought it was dead. It was just flopping. The fox was going up over the hill behind the chicken house, way up over that ridge. And Mama, she had her apron and had a pocket full of shells and had that 12-gauge shotgun at Winchester. I still got it. And that, that 12 single shot, it's not about that long. It's legal limit. It's about 100 years old now. And, uh, but uh, she had that shotgun, and that thing kicks like a mule. And I remember we standing in the, we standing in the dirt road there, and, uh, and the chicken house was on the other side of the creek, and Daddy had put a bridge across there and built the chicken house on the other side. And here that fox had that chicken going up through, and Mama's a hollering at it. And she raised that gun up, boom! Sounded like a cannon went off. I was shocked. Mama, man, that was fun to watch your mama shoot at a fox, you know, with a chicken. And that fox dropped that chicken. It hit the ground, and the fox ran over the hill. Chicken got up, shook itself, and ran back down the hill to the chicken house. She said, well, he didn't get that one. <laughs> but she had that bruise on, and she said, the hawk come in after them chickens. And she said, uh, I got the shotgun. I forgot to hold it tight. And she said, when I pulled the trigger on that thing, it hit my arm right there, and it bruised her arm. She's very protective. But that mother hen, I have seen, I don't know if you have, you may have, being reared on the farm. I have seen a mother hen when a hawk would come down trying to get them sweep down, I've seen that mother hen go into the air and attack and meet that hawk coming down because it's headed after her little one. But I've also seen her, boy, she'd hunker down and she'd just start making a little chirping racket and boy, those little, those little bitty chicks, they'd run and uh, right up under her wings when the rain would come, the storm would come, boy, they'd gather right there. Isn't that something? And he said, just as. He gives us, he gives them an understanding. He gives us a picture. He paints that picture. He shall cover thee with his feathers. We'll cover us over. And under his wings shalt thou trust. You don't have to worry about anything. Why? Because you're under his watch care. And that last element, he says... His truth, his truth shall be thy shield and thy buckler. Be thy shield and buckler. What a consolation tonight of truth. Isn't it amazing when things take place, we can find comfort and peace? Only that, listen, think about this. Only the child of God. Only a child of God has that. The world, Brother Mike, the world don't have that. They don't have that. But we as believers, as believers, as children of God, Brother Eddie, we have that privilege. Oh, to have such great peace. And to know that the God of heaven cares about every need that you have. And that I have. We used to sing, and it's on our, our CD that I did with the boys a long time ago. We still have several of those if you'd like to get one. The kids are going, no, Daddy, please don't mention that. They don't like it because they say it has their kitty voices on it. But we used to do this song, He Loves Me. And you probably remember this song, He Loves Me Like I Was His Only Child. And the, the second verse of that says, it, it, I'm going to give you the gist of it. Uh, he said, there's, there's many in our family. But it's, it's as if I can say, he treats me the best. And it seems like 
that he takes such good care of us that he loves us like we were his only child. God takes care of you and your needs. We have a great God. We have a great God. I want to share that with you tonight, just an, an encouragement to you. Uh, and as I said, we're abbreviating things tonight. And, uh, but I want to just ask you to bow your head where you're at tonight. And uh, just justice, if you would, come to the piano. And, uh, and if you would play just a moment, just uh, uh, play Have Thine Own Way. Just come right across the platform here. And uh, thou art the potter, I am the clay. And let's pray tonight. Where you're at, I'm going to give you just a moment as he plays. Think about the very truth. Aren't you thankful there's one that knows about everything that's going on, everything that's taking place? Maybe where you're at, may you pray and say, God, will you have your way in my life? And in the life of those around me, God, meet, minister to them. Have your way in their life as well. Dear Lord, tonight we come to you. We thank you for who you are. We're thankful that we can come before you. And we're thankful, God, that you are who you are. We're thankful tonight that you are God of all gods. And God, we thank you for the reassurance tonight of who you are and what you do in our lives. God, work in each of our lives, minister in each heart, help us in these days to look full in your wonderful face of your goodness and grace and accept your will of what you're doing in all of our lives. In Christ's name we pray, amen and amen. I'll explain to you, we're going to go off the air here in just a moment, wait just a moment, but uh, I'll, you that are watching, will I'll be informing the church of some things here uh, a little bit later, and we'll keep you up to date, uh, and so uh, you just pray, if you would, for uh, the families that's on the prayer list, and then pray, if you would, for uh, Doris and the Duncan family, if you would, please. God bless you, and uh, thank you for joining in tonight.